Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of Up To Date. Today we are so pumped to be sharing with you our episode with Dr. Marty. He is an ophthalmic surgeon, a gentleman, and an all around dapper dude. So today we're gonna share with you all about his crazy travels, his amazing career, and most importantly, how cool it is to be kind. So once again, please tune in, like, subscribe, and share, and we cannot wait to keep you up to date. Welcome back to Up To Date. I'm your host, Chelsea Texera, and we are so excited to have Dr. Marty Fowler on the show today. Marty, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers for a lovely afternoon. Cheers Thank to you. you. Thank you so much for joining us. So Marty is an ophthalmic plastic surgeon and a car enthusiast, and we are going to jump right in and just get to know a little bit about Marty and his life. So Marty, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background, where you sure. come from, and sure. why you are who you are. Thank you. I appreciate that lovely introduction, Chelsea. Yes, you're very welcome. Uh, so I actually, I grew up back east. Um, I like to always say a small town back east. New York, have you heard of it? Uh, <laughs> and um, a lovely place, uh, but uh, just too cold for me. Um, mm. I, I, I could have probably stayed there, would have been happy, but um, I just couldn't deal with the five months of winter. Oh, wow. So as soon as I got through um, college and medical school, I had a, an opportunity to do a real shortcut kind of a program. I only had to spend about... Uh, basically one calendar year in undergraduate school before heading on to medical school at Jefferson Medical College in Philadelphia, wow. the second oldest medical school in the country. Okay. Um, but then um, I, my interest was uh, in an ophthalmology, eye surgery, and then I found my own niche uh, in eyelid plastic surgery, a uh, very specialized area, and I found it was perfect for me. Uh, I'm the kind of person that likes to know everything about a little bit and a little bit about everything. Mm. And I recall a conversation with a, uh, a resident, a uh, chief resident physician when I was in medical school. I think it was the third year. And I asked him whether he was going to specialize or not. And our medical school is rather academic. And it was somewhat looked look down upon not to specialize after your basic residency, not to do a fellowship. And uh, I could tell he was offended by the question or some off put by it. I didn't mean anything by it. I was just sort of trying to make conversation at three o'clock in the morning and being on call. But he said, no, he said, I'm gonna, I wanna do general internal medicine. Um, he said, and you know, Marty, when you continue on with your career, you'll find you'll be one of two kinds of people. A uh, person who wants to know a little bit about everything and someone wants to know everything about a little bit. And either one is okay, but you gotta find which of those two um, personalities you, you tend to, to gravitate towards. And I told that story for the longest time without any value judgment at all. Just, I just, I thought it stuck with me for all these years. I mean, it's been more than 10 years since I've been in medical school. But uh, <laughs> that, be, that being said, um, <laughs> as I moved on, and in fact, even towards the end of my career, I thought that story needs to be somehow changed a little bit. I think if you're going to have surgery done, uh, you want to go to the person who knows everything about, about the you, one about thing. your little bit. You know, the guy that knows everything about a little bit about everything, fine for a lot of different kinds of things, and it'll get you to the right specialist if you should need it. A lot of things don't require the attention of a specialist, but something like surgery, eh, I'd rather go to the guy who knows everything about that little bit that I want to have worked on. So anyway, that, so I found myself out here. Uh, I did my internship at uh, USC. I did my residency at UCLA and my fellowship in plastic surgery there. So whenever there's a big fo a football thing, I can root for either team. I'm happy either way. <laughs> uh, granted, I've got more years in with UCLA than I have with USC, but um, still the commitment is there. Fight on, go Bruins. Um, there but, we go. but that being said, I, I came down here to San Diego at the, at the conclusion of my practice, or the conclusion of my training to start practice with a group I uh, had an office in La Jolla and an office in, um, in Vista. And it seemed like it would make sense. One was a cataract specialist, one was a LASIK specialist, and I was going to be do the, doing the eyelid surgery. But I didn't feel like I was going to make it into the, um, the mainstream of the group. And that I would always be the, the peripheral one. I, just, I would be the eyelid guy, um, the eyelid plastic surgeon. And so... Uh, You're the go-to. Yeah, and so I decided, you know, that for me, I was better off 
uh, rekindling my old relationships with uh, other surgeons and ended up with 14 locations throughout uh, Southern California. And okay. I, I, I had one in Utah for a while. Uh, I used to say I was um, anatomically local, but geographically diverse, uh, <laughs> as opposed to the opposite, where somebody has one office, does everything at that office. No, I just did one thing. I just had to travel a little bit more. But um, a victim of my own success, I did about 15,000 surgeries, and I blew a couple of discs in my neck a couple of years ago. I'm sorry and, to hear that. Yeah, it was sort of a surprise because I was otherwise healthy and in good shape. But uh, it, How did you blow the discs? Uh, repetitive, they call it repetitive motion injury, or I, I look at it as repetitive stillness injury, mm. sitting like this all day over the operating room table. Mm. Used to use two operating rooms, and so very efficient, very little downtime, very little time to take a break in between cases, and I would do eight or ten a day. And so it took its toll on my neck. And uh, surgery to repair it is plus or minus. So I decided that it was time to do something else or, or nothing else, which is what I've mostly been, been doing the last couple <laughs> of years and uh, sort of uh, indulging my old uh, my interests that I had for a long time. Um, I have a law degree. Uh, I had gone to law school here in um, San Diego a number of years ago, mid-career thing. It would be something great about having both an MD and a JD degree. Uh, the reality is you do one or the other. And then when I stopped doing the one, which I really love, the other plastic surgery, I just wasn't quite motivated enough to want to do the other. Mm -hmm. But it was an interesting experience. So, uh, yeah, I mostly now just, um, I have fun, do things like this, podcast, motivational speaking, um, whatever seems to be interesting. And um, I go back to my original interview for medical school uh, or actually for residency, not that, back, not, not that far back, but for residency. And being in the program I was in, I was a couple of years younger than a lot of the different, a lot of the other uh, res or medical students that were applying for residency. And uh, this one fellow, Dr. Paul Henkind at um, Einstein Medical Center in, in, in the Bronx, not my favorite place to be, but it was a good, a good training program, um, asked me a question I wasn't expecting. You know, when you're going for residency interviews, you get all work, you get all um, prepared for questions about different parts of the anatomy of the thing you're looking for. So it was an ophthalmology residency. So you could have asked me about layers of cornea, layers of retina, whatever they were, and I probably wouldn't be able to answer that. Uh, but he asked me something different. He said, you know, you're quite a bit younger than the other uh, students that are applying for residency. And as you can imagine, I have a concern about maturity level. I said, oh, shoot. How old were you? Uh, I was like 20, 21. Oh, um, well, and, valid, yeah, valid. Uh, yeah, I think I was like 20. And, um, and so the other I was like 23, 24. And I thought, oh, I said, that's a good question. Um, I said, okay, I got I to think fast. I said, well, I'm not sure if this is really a definition of maturity, but I think it would work. I said, how about both the ability and the willingness to put yourself in someone else's shoes? He looked at me and said, yeah, I like it. Good. And then we moved on. Then they, then they proceeded to ask me about the layers of the cornea and layers of the retina. So uh, I guess I did. <laughs> we, we got deep and then we got yeah, deep yeah, into yeah, the cornea. Yeah, exactly. There we go. <laughs> so um, fortunately, I didn't have to uh, stay on the East Coast. I got into my, my first choice, which was UCLA, the Jewel Stein Institute. But um, yeah, I, I basically um, been doing things that I've, I've been able to, to I've, I've wanted to, to do. The medical school uh, question comes up all the time going way back is why do you want to be a doctor? That's always part of the medical school interview. And the answer is always some variation on the theme of I'd like to help people. And uh, it's never quite as, as uh, blunt as that on either side of the question or the answer, but some variation on the, those themes. And when I did stop working, I found myself for a few months wondering, what am I going to do now? I was used to doing maybe 20, 25 patients uh, surgeries per week and really helping people in a very um, tangible, uh, visible way. And all of a sudden, I'm going from 60 to zero. Uh, gee, I wonder what I can do. And I didn't think give it too much. I had even friends say, it's a shame. You're really at the top of your profession. When you quit, it's going to be hard to find something else that you'd be quite, quite good at. Or it's, it's the same level that you were in eyelid surgery. So it's sort of like, thanks, I, you know, but whatever. I thought, okay, it is what it is. But then when I more, the more I got out and socialized with people, the more I realized that uh, a lot of business success uh, is a common thread throughout all of them. Uh, the, the treating clients or patients, uh, customers uh, with respect. Um, and again, some of that same answer I gave Dr. Henkind, of putting yourself in someone else's shoes. How would you feel if... Uh, 
We had spoken briefly this morning earlier about that acronym uh, for the the phrase, think before you speak. Everyone's heard that. Uh, think before you speak. It's a good idea. Think before you act, too. But um, there's an acronym that goes along with that thing. When Marty said this to me, I was like, wait, can you please repeat this? Because I'd actually never heard this acronym. I've, of course, heard think before you speak, which we all should do. Yeah. Um, we could all use a little more practice in that, I think. Um, but this might help people think about it more. So yeah. I would, yeah, so it was, it was something that. that I found a couple of years ago. I would I would both do some motivational speaking. I'd go to, to uh, often it would be like a whole day of speakers. Oftentimes I'd be I'd be called on last minute because if someone would cancel last minute, I said, who do we know who can who can talk and doesn't do much during the day? Oh, Marty, perfect. <laughs> he doesn't do much. Um, but the, the THINK acronym, the T stands for true. The H is helpful. The I I've seen variations on, whether it be inspirational, uh, important, either one of those works. Both are great. Um, uh, the N is necessary, and the K, which is I think the most important, is kind. Um, and so the acronym THINK is true, helpful, inspirational, or important, necessary, or kind. And um, it's a nice way to go through life. I, really? uh, yeah. I was talking to someone the other day. I said, you know, kindness is sort of like... It's like the um, it's like the good kind of selfish, you know. So like there's the the good kind of fat thing. Um, <laughs> the kindness is is the sort of the good kind All of selfish. Photos. You know, being kind to somebody, it's nice for both people. The person you're kind to, for sure, is is going to appreciate it. And being that kind person is its own reward. Isn't so, it so true? What you put out, you get back. For sure, for sure. That that's basically my my religion. That golden rule thing goes around, comes around, 100. do unto others. Um, I think that's a real nice way to live. I mean, they, they put it into um, like sort of technical legal terms you know, for financial advisors called a fiduciary relationship, you know, where you put your client's uh, needs above your own. That should be true of everything, you right. know? I mean, and the, I guess in the, uh, the medical world, we have the Hippocratic Oath, and one of the things that's derived from that is um, first do no harm. And apparently that's not really in there. It's somehow derived from some paraphrasing of some of the words. But uh, that's a good one, too. You know, yeah. or the the Dalai Lama saying, uh, "Our primary purpose on earth is to help others, but if you can't help them, at least don't hurt them." Um, and I and I like all the, the those kind of phrases. I so, do too. I mean, and they're all sort of things you can do like on a on a regular on a, a regular basis. Um, it's not like once in a while these situations would would arise. It's like um, every day you have the you have the opportunity or the choice. Uh, to be kind, uh, to be considerate. All throughout your day. Yeah, There's so yeah, many yeah. times. For sure, for sure. Any interaction you have. And I always tell people, uh, for me personally, when I, when I wake up in the morning, I hope that everyone I, I interact with is going to be somehow pleasantly impacted by interacting with me. Uh, they may not know, know my name, either the same person at the gas station or the, the cashier or the waiter, waitress, whatever, that somehow... Being friendly, being pleasant, uh, at the end of their day, they think, oh, I'm glad I met that guy with the hat, you know, or I'm glad I, I'm glad I saw Marty today if they happen to know me. Well, but you never know what's going on in someone else's life. And, and that's so that so little true. bit of kindness that's just so kind of true. turned around their whole that's day. True. Maybe it, even their whole life, like if you think about it, the butterfly effect is so real. Yeah. One little act of kindness can change the world. Yeah, no, no, I agree. So that's what's brought me here today. I mean, basically I met um, uh, Dylan Welsh. Uh, Shout out our amazing producer. Woo! Yeah. Um, and uh, we had met some time ago at a social event, and he invited me to, to appear on another podcast a couple of weeks ago, which is enjoyable. And um, he got me in contact with you. So that's literally how I got here today was, <laughs> was through Dylan. Well, speaking about how you got here today, um, our drink of the day is actually inspired by you, sir. Uh, for everybody watching, this is called the Rolls Royce. Once again, cheers to you. Thank you. This is inspired by you and all your amazing accomplishments. As always, the recipe will be linked on our Instagram. And so how did you roll up here today, Marty? Tell us. Tell us all about your hobby, your passion, besides, of course, eyelid surgery, which you are the king of. What Thank else are you, you the king of? Well, I am a car enthusiast, and I, as, as so the um, uh, your introduction was was pretty much right on, and, <laughs> and in that order, really. I mean, the 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 ophthalmic plastic surgery allowed me the luxury of, of being the car enthusiast now that I am. But uh, yeah, I'm proud owner. I've got a Rolls Royce Phantom and a 
Lamborghini and a Ferrari and two Porsches and a Tesla. That keeps my, my average gas mileage up because again, <laughs> it gets basically infinite number of miles. Bring it back down to earth exactly. There. Everything yeah. else gets about twelve miles, and um, <laughs> I have a, a, a stretch limousine. So I've got I've got a, a wide variety of vehicles, and um, yeah. So today I decided I'm going to drive the, uh, the 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 Rolls, the Rolls Royce. It, was, it wasn't quite sunny enough to warrant the Lamborghini convertible, so the Rolls Royce would, would actually work. But I did have to check with you about the parking lot because it is a, an awfully large car. Yes. But I've always been interested in uh, in cars. That was one of the things that when I was a kid. Uh, even when I was working and I was busy all the time, um, it always I'd have ten or twelve cars at a given time, and half the time I'd want to take a car out. The battery would have been would have died because I hadn't driven it for a while, so that was an issue. And I, I started letting them go. And when I got out of practice, eventually I was down to like three or four cars. But I've sort of keep on adding to the collection here. You just drive around the block, make sure um, they're good. I drive them as well. I'll drive two or three <laughs> in, in one day. I mean, I may take one out in the morning and then something else in the afternoon, something else for the evening. But um, that's one area, one thing we talk about San Diego having things to do. Uh, if you're a car enthusiast, there's plenty. Um, there's a Cars and Coffee almost every weekend. Uh, there's one in Rancho Santa Fe that I frequent. It's right in the middle of town. Uh, Rancho Santa Fe is a relatively small uh, community, so it's pretty easy to find the middle of town of Rancho Santa Fe. You say middle of downtown, well, that could be a large area, but middle of Rancho Santa Fe is pretty easy to find. They've gone on a hiatus out of respect for the COVID and the um, uh, social distancing and the masking and that kind of stuff, uh, but they reopened. Uh, last week. To be frank, people were, were still getting together. They hadn't gotten the memo. And so uh, it, it's just right. It's on the main street. Many of so, us had it, right? so, so people were still parking there, looking at it and then hanging out with their friends. But um, so that goes on. There's a couple other ones that, that go on. We had, uh, we have a significant um, Concord d'Elegance uh, now in La Jolla that's going on. It's, I don't know, 13th or 14th year. Could be even 15th or 16th year. Um, Unfortunately, that was canceled because uh, it was going to be scheduled in April, and it, they decided to just reschedule for next year. A lot of people did that. Uh, then there's a, a, a big show every year, the international uh, level, in Monterey, California, uh, Pebble Beach specifically. They have a Pebble Beach Concord d'Elegance, and it actually has grown into an entire car week. It starts on Monday, and it pretty much goes through Sunday. So from our conversation this morning, you said that that was one of your absolute favorite places that yes. you've traveled to, yes. which is right here in California. But there are so many amazing places to visit in California. So why don't we start with that? Why don't you tell us more yeah, about Yeah, so Monterey, um, I had gone to originally probably for the first time about 20 years ago. Uh, a friend of mine had a couple of cars that they, it's uh, it's not just a Concord Deli, it's not just a, a, um, a car show, a lot of, a lot of commercial uh, input to it. A lot of uh, major exotic car auctions that go on. I had a couple of friends that had cars at auction and um, they said, hey, we're looking for, for a car, might be good to go. And uh, I just went for the day, I think I was operating all the way through um, Friday afternoon, so I just hopped a plane you know, a late Friday afternoon, got up there, and the auction was Saturday, and probably left on Sunday, and I bought my first Lamborghini Countach at that auction. Um, and then I didn't go back for a number of years until I, until I stopped working. So probably about 15 years it transpired from the time um, I was there until the time I got back there again. But now I go usually from Tuesday through Sunday, uh, they have a number of different auctions that go on. Virtually every high-end manufacturer has a presence uh, at Mont at, uh, in, in Monterey Car Week. Uh, they have a number of different events besides the Pebble Beach, the big um, culminate the big culminary culminating event in Pebble Beach uh, Sunday is preceded by the Quail, another major. Um, car event uh, where they take over a large hotel there. Uh, they have the, the lodge at Pebble Beach. And there's always parties going on virtually every evening, uh, several actually. Lamborghini has a house. Rolls Royce got a house. Marty, do you like to party? Uh, I have been told that that might be one of my <laughs> my character traits. Uh, you know, Leopard doesn't see its own spots, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, no, it's, it's, it's just a lot of fun. We and, will uh, get into that for <laughs> sure. <laughs> no, but it's, yeah, it's just a great time. And, um, the cars are almost secondary to the, the individuals and going year after year, you see the same people. And some people I only see 
uh, once a year because they're uh, they're based overseas. Uh, the uh, uh, a fellow named Torsten, who's the CEO of Rolls Royce. I only see him once a year when he's there at that event. Maybe I might see him if he would come to some other major event here. But by and large, I know I can see him once a year there, or the uh, the Lamborghini uh, chairman. Um, and you'll see them there, just hanging out. And they have they have each have these uh, houses that they they rent for the week uh, around Pebble Beach, the golf course, and it's it's lovely. And um, you need to know a few people, but not it's not that exclusive where you can't get in if you make some effort uh, to contact somebody if you have an interest in um, in exotic cars. So th- that's a very fun trip. Once I actually I drove up there and I decided to stop at the Hearst Castle on the way up. It's not exactly on the way, but it's only about an hour out of the way. And I've heard makes, of it many times. Haven't been there. Yeah, it's amazing. And they have um, different uh, different tours uh, depending on what part of the house you want to see and, and different aspects of the house. Did you so take one? I did. I did. I did it twice, actually. So one was about the grounds and the, the main room and then uh, a lot of history there I, I didn't, I wasn't aware of. And then a friend of mine was taking uh, Film 101 get rid of a general ed credit. And so um, I was helping her with a, with a paper on that. And one of the papers that was written about was uh, Citizen Kane, which is a very, very, very loosely um, based on, uh, on the life of uh, uh, Hearst. And so then the other movie that came up later on was R.K., it was RK-282 or 268 or something. It was based on the making of the movie and how much Hearst tried to try to quash the whole thing because it was not exactly a flattering uh, depiction of him. Uh, Orson Orson Welles was the was the director, but um, yeah. So Monterey has a, has a, been a great favorite of mine. And again, a little history of the the Hearst Castle on the way was sort of fun too. Um, outside of the um, the continental U.S., uh, I've been going to Hawaii. Uh, every few months, I've got a friend who used to live in Rancho Santa Fe, where I live, and uh, just decided, said, you know, I don't need to be here anymore. Uh, I love Hawaii. I love Maui in particular. Uh, built a beautiful home, uh, the Kanapali uh, coffee love farms, oh. and it's up, you know, lovely views. Uh, right Besides up... Kihei, Kanapali is my favorite part of that. Yeah, place. yeah, and I like Kihei too. They have a, it's a little uh, more relaxed, a little more out of the way. But yes, Kanapali is more. There's golf courses and all that kind of thing out there, and like you said, the views and yeah, and Maui overall, you know, it's it's a it is a relaxed place. But uh, the place called Fleetwoods in um, uh, right there on the main the main street, and it, it's named Fleetwood after Mick Fleetwood from Fleetwood Mac, and so he knows him. And then I think um, Tyler Stephen Tyler from uh, uh, Aerosmith from Aerosmith. Thank you. Um, I'm getting as old as him, uh, <laughs> but uh, he no. um, he has a uh, uh, he has, often performs there. He has a home there. So uh, my friend was involved with the Del Mar Fairgrounds for many years. So he has contacts through that. So when they're in town, like, hey, you know, Tyler's going to be playing over at Fleetwoods. How fun! Whatever. Yeah, so I show a, up for that. Yeah, a little bit of Nile, but overall, it's uh, more like R and R when I go to Maui. Yep. I just relax, you know. Uh, Rest and re- relaxation kind of time. Yes. Um, I do like Oahu, and I do like Oahu's uh, a little more than R and R. Yeah, <laughs> and the thing about Honolulu is that um, there's more uh, there's more nightlife. It's to me, it's a little more similar to downtown San Diego, yep. uh, or not quite the same as downtown LA, but. But it's more of a beachfront. Yeah. We, I yeah. mean, we obviously are on the water here in San Diego, but it's not a beachfront like Waikiki is. Something. No, but no, yeah. for sure. For sure. So between the two, I, they, they both serve their own purpose. And I like to go to both. I'm going to head out there. I'll often stop at um, Honolulu first and then head on to Maui or, or, or vice versa. I actually learned to surf there. Yeah, you really. I, I, that's still. I. I'm not a real strong swimmer. You, you said you're not. You're not a huge water sports person. No. But you have a boat, right? I do. So, I so do. I my. I grew up. My dad lives on uh, Discovery Bay. It is. Do you know where Discovery Bay mm. is? I do. I do. So yeah. So he's lived there for many years. So I grew up. I'm such a water baby. So whether it was jet skis, it's pontoon boat, or behind the wakeboard boat, speed boat, any of that, I love to be on the water. But my dad, I've never seen him behind the boat. He's always the one driving it. Yep. So, that's, that would be me. That would be me. Yep. People say, "Why don't you ever get in the water?" So well, if I want to get in the water, I wouldn't have a boat. I just, I, <laughs> I drive the boat. I don't want to get wet if I don't have to. Um, but um, no, but the water sports are are, are, are wonderful. Um, in fact, speaking about that, we didn't talk about this earlier. I didn't really think about it. But I do like the Caribbean for the sake of how warm 
the uh, the Caribbean is in terms of the water. Uh, I really want to go to Miami and then hop on over. I haven't, yeah. haven't done that yet. Th- this year, well, maybe next, but this year going on and the next year, that is top of my list for sure. Yeah. I um, The other one I, th- I thought of too, so we talked about Monterey a bit. Again, that's sort of a personal thing because of the, the car. We I, I probably would, I'd consider going there, but it's not, it's not exactly on the beaten path. You got to, you know, either drive or you, the flights are a little bit more limited because it's not a real popular tourist destination per se. It's just very popular during car, during car week. It'd be so popular that you pay three hundred dollars for a, a motel six room, oh, wow. um, or five hundred for a Best Western hotel, um, and then uh, the Oahu and. Uh, Maui islands are fabulous, but Cabo, I've been going to Cabo uh, on a fairly regular basis too. Uh, I had gone for a number of years. I like cruising. That seems to be a non-issue now. For Taking the a cruise? Here. Well, yeah, we're basically they call them the Mexican Riviera. So you'd go spend a day in a number of different ports and oftentimes Cabo would be one of those ports. Puerto Vallarta. I love Cabo. Puerto Vallarta. Puerto Vallarta and Cabo are my absolute favorite. I, I did the same thing on one cruise. Um, but I kind of like to like fly and go, but I guess the cruise was cool. Cause then you had, it's the different, yeah, that's, you yeah, know, and, yeah. I, and I, and I, and I appreciate your, you know, your respect for the cruise thing. And I know what you mean. Um, it's cool. I like the, both. the problem with the cruising though, is you don't get the nightlife. You don't get the, you're, you're there for when we, we ported it in Cabo for maybe eight hours. Right. That's it. You get there. You get there seven, at 7 a.m. Right. I'm drunk from the night before everyone, um, get out and <laughs> then you're supposed to go to Cabo Wabo. You go to Mango Deck. Right. Um, which everyone, I got second place, uh, first worst, second the best in a push up competition there. So I, I was there the last time I was there, Mango Deck. <laughs> Mango Deck is so much fun. They have but, a lot of good contests. But so once again, you're only there for eight hours. You have to row on this little boat back to the ship yep. before you know it. And Cabo is somewhere you could absolutely spend multiple days. And that's so what that's I do. the only thing it didn't do it justice, I felt for no. me. Like stopping off at ports, like you get a little taste, but I want the whole enchilada, if yeah. you will. Yes, <laughs> no pun intended. No, for sure. I think like three or four, three or four days is a is a nice amount of time. Not even enough. Like last time I went, um, I had a chance to visit the uh, Omnia. Uh, Los Cabos. Yes, how was which, it? Very nice. Very nice. You know, it's the it's their like the Omnia nightclub we have here, but it's their their day club. Uh, they are loosely based on the uh, the Vegas day clubs that they have. Um, so, uh, I probably could have spent a couple more days there. The the day club I was there in uh, in February, and so it was, they had just opened. And it's only open, I think, on Friday and Saturday or something, uh, weekends. But, you know, during the summer, it's open most every day. Uh, but that was fun. And that whole area of, it had been a couple of years since I had been uh, to Cabo, but that Los Cabos area, about a half hour to 40 minutes away from Cabo San Lucas, has really built up a lot. Uh, some lovely hotels, and uh, of course, there's Ami Los Cabos there. Uh, so yeah, Cabo's got a lot to offer, but I think the thing I wasn't thinking about was everyone thinks about Mexico. Oh yeah, it's nice and warm and beach day every day. Yeah. It's like, i you know, being the bumpkin I was when I came to California, <laughs> I thought every day was going to be a beach day. And I came out here for my internship. Hello, June Bloom. Yeah, we go. Here we are. Yeah. But I found, you know, come uh, October, November, it was getting cold. And I said, like, wait a minute. I signed up for like 75 degrees every day, maybe 80. It does get maybe, cold here. It does. I mean, we have people were saying when I, when I left, there are a lot of New Yorkers and a lot of people back east, but just they're, they're dying the wall in New Yorkers. They're never, never going to leave. Oh, you're going to miss the change of seasons, you know, earthquakes, whatever. No, I won't. No, exactly. The change of seasons one always used to get me. And I used to say <laughs> people, you know, when someone would say that, I said, you know, it makes me think, if you take a hammer and you start whacking yourself on the head, when you stop, it feels really, really good, doesn't it? To me, that's that's what change of seasons mean, means to me. I don't need to be going through five months of cold weather to appreciate, you know, seven months of where it's going to be nice. I'm okay with the memory of trudging in the snow to get anywhere and, you know, shoveling the car yeah, out. Yeah, thanks for the memories, even though they weren't that great. Yeah, exactly. So. Right, right. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so I, um, I went to Cabo in February, mid-February. And it wasn't exactly beach weather. I should have checked. All really? I had to do was check the weather thing on my phone. Um, it was okay. It was like 70, 71. But it was maybe two degrees, three degrees warmer than it was in San Diego. Hmm. And I should have gone to Maui because that was you know, easily five, 10 degrees warmer. That would have been a better time. So I'm thinking for Cabo, um, I'd probably wait till April 
for May. Well, yeah. now is great. I uh, went in or, May when I went on my cruise, and it yeah. was perfect. Yeah, and that weather was great then. Um, but I, I regret it because Puerto Vallarta, being a little further south, even when I went in February, in February was not insignificantly warmer. I think four or five degrees. Oh, shit, I should have gone to Puerto Vallarta. I really love Puerto Vallarta um, the best. I've only been there as a, as a cruise ship destination, though. So I don't really know. I stayed know. there for a week before, and it was yeah. absolutely beautiful. I speak a little bit of Spanish, so it was a lot easier. Um, that helps, yes. for sure. But it, it's gorgeous. I love the cobblestone streets. It just really kind of, like, brings you to a different time when you're there. Yeah. Uh, the fresh food. Um, we did, like, the banana boats. You can just walk out on the beach and someone will take you out on them. Mm -hmm. It was so much fun. It was beautiful. And it has a lovely history. I guess it was a really sleepy fishing town for years. And uh, for some reason, the director of the movie, or producer, director, I, I get a little confused all the time, um, of the movie Night of the Iguana, um, oh, I've uh, never heard of the Gwana's it's, it's, it's one of the, again, I learned about that from, <laughs> from Film 101. Um, but it was a, a very well-known movie from the 50s or 60s. And um, Richard Burton, I think, might have been it. Um, but uh, yeah, it was a, just a very, very well-received movie. And they, they just picked this random town in, uh, in Mexico called, that no one ever heard of, Puerto Vallarta. And it popularized, put it on the, the map, and then people started coming, and it's become significant. But I think Cabo uh, is probably busier and more popular, maybe because it's a little bit closer. But my issue with, with Cabo versus uh, Puerto Vallarta is the airport's so far away. So even if it's only it's a short, shorter flight to get to Cabo than it is to Puerto Vallarta, about an hour drive from the airport to where you want That's to be. That's what the perk of the, the ship was. Yes, exactly, you, exactly. They literally, they row you out to get up on the dock to get out in Cabo versus mm -hmm. if you flew in. Yeah, it's a lot different. It is, it is. So, um, but they're, they're still great. I've never been to Mexico City. Um, they were That's in... actually next on my list. Our very first episode, we talked about that. Um, Allie, her very favorite place was Mexico City. I've heard that. I've heard, I mean, and again, being that sort of city-inclined person, I've, I'd probably love it. But I've, I've never had occasion to go. It's always a, it, it been either Cabo, Puerto Vallarta. Because it's not a beach city. No, exactly. So, so they never, you wouldn't get a cruise ship to come in inland 50 miles or, or even go. I guess maybe they might have, you know, excursions if you're there for the day. But again, that's that's the, the issue with the cruise thing is that you don't get the nightlife experience. You have the, the convenience of not having to... Uh, Go out to eat if you don't want to. The, not the packing and unpacking once, and then packing to leave at the end of it. So I like them both. And I was. It's funny in February I was thinking about doing a cruise. I don't know why. And I just uh, whatever arbitrarily decided to do um, Cabo instead. I'm sort of glad that I didn't because um, who knows? You know, with what was going on with the cruise ships back then, it was just starting to be an issue. That was a good decision. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, th I'm glad that I that I just I did what what I what I did. That's another thing. Talking about the motivational speaking thing that I occasionally do is um, I try to give people the advice. Uh, we've all made mistakes in our lives. I don't care who you are, you know. And um, no one has a time machine yet. That, that I'm aware of, at least not that not they're willing to share with me. We can go back and change that mistake. And I try to share with people, if you're basically happy today, just basically, not everything, not every last I dotted and T crossed, but if you're basically happy today, live with no regrets. Because whatever mistakes you think you may have made along the way, it brought you to where you are today. And if you're basically happy, it's okay. Because it's where it's where you want to be, and it, and you're in a comfortable place now. Could you have maybe done something different that would have been better, uh, a better job or better location? No, because Pop. you can't go back. You but can't you can go always back. be better going and, forward. You can, and exactly, you can move forward on your on your your journey. Um, I'm not a big country western um, music fan. They I sing mean, a lot about Mexico. They do, they do, yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot. I mean, but um, yeah, right off the top of my head, you know. But um, there's one song that uh, really fits into my philosophy, and it it's a it's a lovely song by Rascal Flatts, and it's "Bless the Broken Road," oh, I love Rascal and Flats. it's a really beautiful song, and it's uh, it's ostensibly written or sung by this guy to his new girlfriend, the love of his life. And he goes through uh, basically the broken road he had taken to get there, to meet her, um, the, the, the broken hearts, the lonely nights or whatever, all that kind of stuff. Um, but now he's with this girl and it's wonderful. And everything, yeah. it was worth, you know, God bless 
the broken road. That led um, me straight to you. Yeah, exactly. There you go. So you, you're familiar with... Oh, I know with, it all. With, with, I saw with, them with, in Tahoe. Yeah. You um, and I think you can, you can expand that, extrapolate that concept to life in general. Wherever you are, if, if you're basically happy, God bless the broken road. God Every bless the Every bit of the broken road led you to where you are right now. Yeah. And, 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 My again, road was broken and here we are. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> exactly. But the song, you know, again, toward, headed towards or geared towards a romantic situation, why not apply it to life in, in general? Uh, the broken road, the mistakes we, we, we made. If we're basically happy today, Fine. I mean, I'm sure Rascal Flats would sort of cringe at my expansion or extrapolation of their of their, their romantic uh, ballad. But I don't think so. but I, but I think they would understand where, I, where I'm I'm coming from because we've had that relationships that don't go as we would have would have liked. Um, and it's maybe that's part of your broken road. They become a part of you every yeah, single thing. Yes. Yeah. And there's always you know the idea of, of staying friends with your ex, uh, or at least at least I don't know, maybe and then uh, the idea of of at least not resenting yourself or them. Uh, I like that phrase, um, holding resentments is like taking poison and hoping the other person dies. I think that- Holding a hot coal is like- And and hoping the other person burns. Burns you, yeah, (laughs) exactly. exactly. And that's exactly right. We have the same idea, yes. Um, And if you don't want to deal with them, fine, but- uh, the resentment isn't necessary. It's not a necessary part of a of a, of a breakup. And I'm always um, impressed with people that can stay friends, or not stay, even just stay uh, cordial, stay uh, somehow uh, amicable. With I, I have a really good example. I'm glad you just said this. So I actually just uh, went through kind of a rough sort of breakup, but um, just kind of unnecessary things were said, and I did feel some resentment. The whole unfollowing thing went down. Yeah. Of course, I did it first. Um, but yes. anyway, so because that person was hurt too, they unfollowed me back, but I saw them watching my story. So you had to search me. So I know you're there looking you for me. Um, but also, so I know I'm like, you're hurting, I'm hurting, hurting people hurt people. But at the same time, so this person had just recently lost his father and this last father's day and I'm a Taurus, I'm a bull. I am stubborn as all hell. Um, but also this father's day, I just had this lightness in my heart and I thought about this person. Um, let's be honest, I think about you every day. But, um, also, uh, you would never know that. Right. But anyway, so I decided to text him and I said, and never ever would this person have ever gotten it. Like he's lucky father's day wasn't a year from now. It it happened. So I, I said, thinking of you and it felt so good because sometimes if you like, you're sending a text that you think is like kind of, um, controversial, you're like, oh my gosh, like nervous. I wasn't nervous because it came from a place of love. Yes. I'd finally let go of for the past like month and a half. I had this resentment in my heart. I really did. I'm like, this person hurt me. I want to hurt them. Yeah. But but that's not nice, but I can, I'm human and I can admit that. Right. But so I finally said, you know what? I do care about this person. I want them to know it. Um, and I'm going to show it. So I, so I just said very short and sweet thinking of you blue heart, not red because you don't deserve a red heart. Uh, blue is fatherly. So anyway, sent that. And then immediately I got a text back. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Five minutes later, have a happy father's day. Three exclamations. I'm like, you're excited to hear from me. So anyway, I felt really good about it. Of yes. course I didn't, I said nothing else back, but I felt so good inside because I released the resentment and I gave forgiveness and I'm sure that that's something we both were craving. So sure. So yeah, so I think that is like a really uh, healthy thing to bring up because yeah, like we all feel resentment, but once like you can hold on to it for as long as you want, but you're the only person that's going to be hurting. Like I was hurting and I feel so much better about it all now. I hope that that the air has been cleared. It has been for me and I hope it has been cleared for this other person that yeah. I do super care about, you know? So, so yeah. So um, I think that's a really great transition, Marty. Um, and well, well, and that's a great example going back to that kindness thing. Yeah. Is it, um, that was a very kind act. The, Thank the, you. The fellow lost his father. It's Father's Day. It's <laughs> yeah. first father. And so you reached out to him. That's a, that's a kind act. He felt, I'm sure, exclamation, exclamation, three, three, three times. I know. Uh, I was like, he, oh. he, he, he was thrilled to hear from you. <laughs> I know. And so everybody was benefited by that that kind act. I know. You were too. And even if the motivation was somehow, oh, I, whatever whatever it was, it was a kind act that, that uh, impacted both of you. It, it made so. me feel good to hopefully make him feel good. Yeah. Um, because up until then I'd been feeling bad, but I felt like we both had been feeling bad about each other and I wanted 
that to go away. Yes, and that was perfect. That was a lovely gift to give somebody. Absolutely. No, I agree. Thank you. Yeah. So, you know, like your words can help and heal people. Like, as you said, you're a motivational speaker. I'm a comm major. And when I was going through my undergrad and stuff, that's what I wanted to do, be a motivational speaker. And in a way, this is kind of what I hope to do with this platform is to motivate people to speak what's on their heart, do what's on their heart and live their dreams. It's beautiful. That's beautiful. Well, it goes back to what we were talking about before, and I think I got off on my own tangent, my own tangent. Love tangents, love them. Um, is the idea of, um, of helping people. And when I couldn't help anybody after stopping my surgery, um, there's always to help people. You don't have to be a doctor. You don't have to be a surgeon to help people. You can just, just be a kind, a kind person and, and be, an, an, um, be a, loving. A, a willing listener. You know, someone has an issue. Uh, when I was going through my divorce uh, about 10 years ago, um, I was miserable. It, was, it came out of the blue as far as I was concerned. Um, and uh, it took about a year or two to get over it. It was, it was for a long time. And... Um, a lot of my friends came out and said, you know, you got to get out, Marty. He said, what you're going to resent most and regret, not resent, I don't like that word. Uh, what you're going to regret but it's most. But it's the truth. It's the truth. We feel you, it. We need to release it. Though. Yeah. What you'll regret most is wasting this, you know, these, these couple of years. And um, I finally started getting out and doing things and meeting people. And uh, the life didn't end at my divorce. It, it ended, if I could have ended, if I had decided not to ever go out of my house, I was going to be uh, rolling through my, you know, guard gated community. Hey, Marty, you want to come out and play? Uh, it was up to me to get out there and, and be friendly and be, be pleasant and meet people. But uh, I'm so grateful for all those, those people. Uh, and I can't even remember all of them. There are so many that gave me that advice. That what I do now, if I know someone's going through a breakup, a divorce, I make I go out of my way to yeah. try to help them because and I tell them I said someone was there for me like I'm I am you for you. You have to be a friend to have a friend. Yeah, and I and I want to pay them back uh, by helping you out. Um, I mean, many of the uh, the nightclub uh, scene here, uh, very very helpful. You know, I just started getting out a little bit and meeting people, and uh, the VIP hosts, Omnia, Oxford, uh, Park, um, Flux, Basement, um, all very 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 welcoming people. Shout out uh, downtown SD. Yes, exactly, and um, <laughs> they didn't have to be that way. They could just, oh, you know, Marty, whatever. Uh, but they, I, I feel genuinely welcomed at all those, those places. And uh, uh, I'm forever grateful. I mean, some guys have moved on and done other things. A lot of them end up in other businesses. But I stay friends with them. Come that birthday notification on Facebook, they're getting a happy birthday message for me. I don't care. They're selling real estate in Temecula. I remember when they were nice to me. And right. I don't forget that. And that's a, that, that's a good thing. You know, it, 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 it's okay to forget things that didn't go your way yeah, but it's it's a nice thing or even more important remember people that helped you along the way exactly. and i've had a lot of that both professionally along the way uh in my career and then socially in the last several years and um i think that's an important thing in terms of of dating that we talk about is right. getting out you know after that after that that breakup or after sort of a slow spell of just not meeting anybody special keep on getting on that horse you know, getting on the horse and meeting people and putting yourself out there and becoming the best version of you that you can be. I don't mean just even physically, you know, hitting the gym is important too, but you know, gyms try, are open. Yeah, that's right. They are as of the 12th, I think, right? Yeah. So going on second week, yes. still haven't gone yet. Not, I'm getting ready, but I've been doing lots of walking. <laughs> that's lots, good. lots of walking. My, my Instagram has gone from like um, nightclubs, DJ booths, red carpet events, Award shows, fashions, to, to <laughs> posing with goats and hikes. Well, because you're the goat. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate Come that. On, Marty. Um, so I'm I'm looking forward to having the you know the uh, the gyms. I I never done a gym posts on on Instagram. Well, that's good. Please don't. Yeah, yeah. I I, th I think I, I think there are enough <laughs> of those. Uh, my trainer. Uh, I'll put a word at, at word on him. Uh, due to Duda Bueno from the gym in PB. Okay. Uh, fabulous trainer. Thank you. Thank you, Duda. I'll probably see you sooner than later. Um, he often does like <laughs> uh, does things on a story, uh, on his Instagram story. I love um, it. I love a good story. Yeah. So, but in terms of an actual post, uh, no, I don't think I need to be doing the gym posts. But, but I, again, I digress. But we should work on ourselves. I, I've, I've had a, 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 some type of an interaction and a, a talk that I was talking to uh, a group of people and I forget what the subject was, but I was saying, you know, it is possible to grow 
older without growing any wiser, without getting any more mature. Your body, your body just gets older, and, that's and, not for and you're and you're the same person you were when you were twenty or twenty five, except you're older. Great. I mean, if you're going to be, if you have to age anyway, um, keep yourself healthy. Uh, but also Mind, keep your body and spirit. There we go. All That's three. Where you're going. All okay, yeah. three exactly. Yeah. Um, but it's funny talking about about uh, looking your best and dating. Uh, if I may digress for one yes. more one more story. This is one of my favorites. <laughs> I've only told this like all the time. But um, <laughs> okay. when I was when I was in, in practice, people would often ask me after the surgery. It was very successful, very quick results. I mean, I could show people a mirror right after surgery. They'd get an idea what they're going to look like and be happy with it. Um, I mean, some, you know, it wouldn't even be much bruising or swelling initially. It would get, I'd say, this is as good as you're going to look for a couple of days, so take a look now. Yeah. Um, get it while it's hot. Exactly. Yeah. And it, it'll look like that in, even better in a week, but just Tonight, you won't look like this. I don't want you to be concerned. Um, but there was, a, I used to go every year to the eyelid plastic surgery, blepharoplasty, cosmetic blepharoplasty course at UCLA. And I was, to be frank, I was one of the, um, uh, the organizers of the, of the event, we'll say more than 10 years ago, um, at UCLA. Wink, wink. And so I still go, even though I haven't worked for, for a number of years. I still go. I see my friends every year. There are other, other quite a few ophthalmic plastic, eyelid plastic surgeons. So I see them every year. And people don't change much from year to year, by and large. That's changed in like five years, 10 years, 15 years. But every year, you don't really notice the subtle differences from one year to someone getting older uh, or looking older. Uh, so this one year, a friend of mine here, uh, Cesar Chavez, uh, related to the Cesar Chavez, the famous, uh, well, I guess getting a long time ago, but uh, led the lettuce boycotts back in the 70s and one of the first of the, uh, the labor leaders of the, or the, uh, the, the farm workers here, here in California. Uh, but just a great, a great friend, and I just sort of lost touch with him over the years. A great surgeon. He, I think he still practices here in Encinitas and uh, I think he has another office in Brawley. But he was doing a keynote address at UCLA, the Jewel Stein Institute, where I'd done my training. And I thought, you know, it's Friday afternoon. This is before I started going out. I had nothing to do. It was Friday. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll go up and see him. So I get up there, and I walk in the room, and I'm seeing these people I recognize. It's been maybe 15 years since I last saw them, maybe 20, yikes. Um, and they all look so old. I said, shit, do I look that old? I hope not. I don't know. So I'm walking around. I see everybody. Everybody except this one guy, George. George Ryasic. Very, very, very successful ophthalmologist in the Valley up in L.A. Now, George, when I was a resident with him, he was a year ahead of me. He would never say anything bad about anything or anybody. He was just like Mr. Pollyanna. Everything, always finding that, that well, silver line to every dark. Exactly. And, but... It's absolutely to the the nth degree he was like that and I see George and he looks about the same as he did last time I'd seen him I thought you know what I'm making that connection I don't know if true I mean I've got a, I've got a a uh, experimental group of one this one anecdotal example but you know what what's wrong with that being I'm joyous just being makes you boyish there we go. I like it. I like it. Why not? Well, You're right. a wordsmith. But Thanks. the idea of just uh, of having that attitude. So I'm thinking back when I was in practice, I would have probably added that um, to the list of things. What can I do to maintain my result, to, to, to maintain a youthful appearance? Well, you know, get enough sleep, exercise, diet, etc. I would have said, try to maintain a positive attitude like George Ryasich. Um, and I, I haven't seen him uh, for a while since, but... Um, and I was every time I mentioned his name, I got to call him. I got, maybe I'll call him today, but um, it looked amazing. And I think that's one of those things we can do to. Uh, and even if I'm wrong, if it has nothing to do at all, George just has amazing freaking genes, and he's just lucky. Um, if I'm right, then great. And if I'm wrong, it's not a bad way to live. Just look at the positive as best you can. Absolutely. I just had this thought that being grateful makes you great and full, full yeah. of life, full of. Greatness, people are going to look at you like this is a great person because they are giving their gratitude to me by being kind and and just flowing through life with an attitude of gratitude. Yeah, and you know, I hashtag virtually every one of my Instagram posts with that. I mean, I, I live with that. And they say, uh, the more grateful you are, the more you'll have to be grateful for. Absolutely. And I'm thinking, yeah, sure. I mean, it's, it's somehow that people, you attract that, uh, your, your tribe attracts your vibe, those, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. But, um, 
anyway, we were going to transition into dating um, in so, San Diego yes. or, any, or anywhere. Yes. And um, I guess part of what, what I, I said before in general is probably true of dating, and that is um, while you are waiting for that right person to come along, work on yourself, and it's okay. And it's okay to be alone for a while. And it's okay to go with somebody that you might not otherwise fit your criteria because you don't know. And... Uh, who knows, make his day or make her day, uh, have lunch or something. And but don't ghost them. We talk about this. Don't ghost them. Don't ghost Say them. They, you shouldn't ghost thank them. Thank you for the fun, but you're not the one. There we go. I love it. We're getting little slogans together here, too. But <laughs> um, but I, I I tell people, too, and you're... Uh, like for me, I was, when I first started hitting parties and clubs, I didn't know anybody. Uh, now I walk in, hey, Dr. Marty, could you come in tonight or whatever? But I didn't know anybody. And I appreciate people coming, approaching me. And so now when I go to parties, I, choose, I try to do the same thing. I walk into a party and probably and I know everybody. Or at least I know a lot of people. And most of the parties I go to, I got to expand my social circles. Even in LA, it's getting like that. Um, but if I see somebody obviously not fitting into the whole thing, but sort of on the side being awkward, Wallflower. I, yeah, wallflower, exactly. I approached them and said, hey, uh, I'm Marty. Tell uh, me about you. What's yeah, going what's, on? What's your, how, how, do you, how do you know the host? What's your story? Yeah, exactly. exactly. Everyone has a story, and right. we connect with stories. And then all of a sudden, you know, I said, hey, do you know any you – know, I said, I know a lot of people here, bro. Uh, you want me to meet some people? Come. I'll introduce you. Or sometimes – Come, come I, with the kick drum. Come. There we go. I'll go to a party where I, 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 I might not know too many people. And I'll get there early. No one's there yet. And I see somebody I haven't met before. So how do you know? I, said, I, I don't know anybody. I said, well, I don't know anybody here yet either. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll talk. And so from there, um, it can grow into a friendship, a, uh, a pal to hang around with, could develop into something else. But who knows? You know, but the idea of putting yourself out there, being friendly, uh, will never Will never go out of, out of style. It will never be something that uh, you shouldn't strive for. Because again, um, I tell people kindness is as simple as like thinking about the things people do that make you feel good. Do those same things to other people. It's, it's not. This is clearly not rocket science. And if you can get out of your own head as best as you can, and again, you're gonna have bad days. It's okay to have those. But if you can try to put more of the good days and orchestrate better days for yourself you'll see how that that could work out for you have you ever read the book or heard of the book of the four agreements yes i have so I have. don't take anything personally um don't it's always do your best is the fourth one um don't make assumptions and do you remember what the other one is no but I anyway don't. so but always do your best like no matter if you're sick if you're upset if you're always doing your best and you put that out there then that is all that you can kind of put out and, and, and feel that you're like, I did my best in the situation. I'm going to get the best back. Hopefully that yeah. I can, but we're not all going to have good days. No. But if you're I mean, that's putting out the optimistic. intention, the intention of I'm doing my best, I'm going to give my best. Then hopefully that that's what you're going to get back. Because yeah. I know I've had people's kindness uh, come back to me when I wasn't having a good day. Like today I was driving and somebody cut me off and I, you know, definitely laid on the horn. But if I would have taken that in a different, nothing else happened. You know what I mean? Right, but, right, right. But we can always be more mindful. I was doing my best in the situation because I wasn't happy about it. So yeah. we, all, we all we all are learning and, um, you know, the world keeps turning. But at the same time, like, I next time would probably be like, okay, I'm just going to take a breath and not do that. Yes, exactly. And as, as long as you learn from it. And it's yeah. okay to forgive yourself, the, you know, minor indiscretions like that. I had a situation. I was driving the uh, the rolls to go to Farmer's Market in Rancho Santa Fe last week. And so I came to an intersection didn't know I had a stop sign too in the parking lot. So somebody, um, so I just kept going. I didn't notice the, uh, I don't drive there that often, that little part of the parking lot. And they gave me a look. And I gave them a look back. Oh, the look. And, um, and they, they went like that. And I went like that, some variation on the theme of like that. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, and I felt bad afterward because I realized I had blown the stop sign. They were perfectly in the race. So, okay. So at least for the time being, at least the next several months, I probably will not, Will not do that. I will not do that. I, I definitely won't blow that stop sign again. But I won't be so quick to go like that. To because somebody. sometimes we're wrong. Yes. And we don't, we don't yes, realize it until sure. later. For so sure. yeah, just being being humble is honestly, I think, a key to, to being happy. Yeah. Um. Yeah. We're not always right, and people aren't always going to do right by us. But if we can take a moment and think about how we react, think. Yeah. Exactly. Think. 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 And thoughtful. Then, yeah. Say so, it again. So it's a T is a true. H is helpful. 
I is inspirational or important uh, and is necessary, but the K is the big one. My That's honk, the kind. My honk was necessary. It wasn't yeah. kind, but it was necessary. <laughs> and we go. And, we, and it's okay to, to rationalize, too. But, you know, the another, the another quote that I like, and maybe this is almost a, a, a takeoff what we've been talking about most, yes. of, most of the time today, is a quote from Maya Angelou. And she, this is a... Uh, a poet made famous by um, Oprah Winfrey a number of years ago. And she has a lot of great uh, poets, uh, poems that, that she's written. I took a poetry class last last semester, too. I mean, not me, but helping my friend with the poetry mm-hmm. class. So, you, got, um, you got the cliff notes. Yeah, exactly. Um, but she has a great quote. And um, I'll often close my motivational speeches with this. I'll say, uh, my Angela says, people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. And I'm thinking, exactly. exactly. If you're aware of that, if you're aware of that in your interaction with people, they were not going to forget how you made them feel. Um, if you look at everybody as a, as a, as a child, because there's an inner child in all of us, um, you, 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 would, you yeah. wouldn't want to hurt hurt uh, hurt a child. So if you got it, if you have to correct somebody, you have to scold somebody, you have to criticize a coworker or an employee. Keep that in mind. They'll never forget how you made them feel. And if you can do it in such a way, yeah, as long as they need the criticism, they do it in such a way that you don't make them feel like nothing, um, they'll appreciate it. And they'll probably, you'll probably get more out of it. Again, it's one of those kind of things that has like maybe a selfish aspect to it, um, that you'll get more, more results from being kind or pleasant to somebody. Uh, there's a famous um, fellow who does... Um, Zig Ziglar, uh, like a super salesman Love guy. Zig, yeah. And uh, he talks about, and you need to correct somebody. Before you jump into the criticism, list all the things you appreciate about them. Because chances are, they, they're, all these things are true. And so when you, if you say, you know, I really like the way you come in on time every day. And, you know, you get, the, I get my instruments set up all the time, always on schedule. And um, so when you get finally to the one thing that you need to correct them, they're open to it. You know, like there's some wall that, that's gone up. You've lowered that wall down to that's the level really, of a curb, yeah. and they're receptive. It's like, you know what? You're right. You're right, Dr. Fowler. You know, I, uh, I didn't wipe off the betadine properly. And I know it gets itchy on people's faces. Oh, by the way, if you, have, you, know, if you, have, if you want to experiment, get your face wet. If you don't dry it, uh, with a towel, you know, let air dry. It gets itchy, and it it's not a big dry. deal. But you're trying dry. to operate someone's eyelids, and they're going like that. It's a, it, it can be a pain. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> but the idea of just of make, making sure you try, and not it can't be 100 percent, or it, it could be, but likely it won't be 100 percent. But have it, have it in the back of your mind. I love that they'll forget what you said, what you did, but never forget how you, you made them feel. So. I think that that is a perfect send off. So once again, Dr. Marty, thank you so much for being thank here. Thank you. Cheers thank again cheers. to you. Thank and, you. And to sign it off, people uh-huh. will forget what you said. They'll forget what you did. They will always remember how you made them feel. So always remember to keep it real, keep it loving, and come back to stay up to date. And then um, your Instagram, you, do people know your Instagram? My Instagram is at Chelsea Stars and at uh, up to date with Chelsea Pod. We will absolutely link you as well. And you're going to be in our stories. Everyone, you will know where to find this amazing man, Dr. Marty, with three Y's. Thank you. And this is where we say goodbye. Bye bye. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>